This is gonna be a review of the AKU 360 mirror dash cam. This is the first 360 degree mirror dash cam that we have seen come to the market and there's a lot more to it. If you wanna get your own AKY V360 ST V360 360-degree mirror dash cam, I placed a link in the description down below for you so you can check it out further and see what the different uh, bundles that they have available for there are. So first off, I'll start by showing you what you get inside of this box and what the accessories that come with the dash cam look like. And then we'll take it out in the car so we can go over the actual features. Then I'll take it out on the road and we'll get some actual test drive footage both at day and at night so we can compare the performance and see the video quality of the dash cam. So starting with the dash cam itself, oh man, look at this thing. This thing is huge. It's a full 12 inches in size and it has a reflective screen, which means that when the LCD panel is off, we can use this as a regular mirror. But once we turn it on, this entire thing turns into a touch screen. Now the 360 degree camera is gonna now allow us simultaneously to look to the front, to the back, so the inside of the car, and that is located here. So that is really interesting how they have merged two technologies, mirror dash cams and 360 degree camera. But how is this dash cam mirror installed? Well, we don't have to remove the original mirror. We simply take this mirror and slide it on top of our existing mirror, and then we secure it with this high strength silicone straps like this. So this is gonna hold the LCD mirror to our existing mirror and whenever we wanna get it off or move it to another car, we can simply remove that very easily. Also notice the straps, they are almost flat. Now this is a good feature because there are some dash cam mirrors that do have straps that look like, like this, like a letter C. And if your mirror happens to be bigger than that letter C, it's gonna be hard for you to put your dash cam because it's not gonna fit inside of that strap size or shape. Because the straps are flat or almost flat, even if your mirror is larger, it will still fit in here and the straps will wrap around your mirror. So that is pretty cool that they made the straps stick out this way so they can wrap around your mirror. But I said there's a lot more to this 360 degree mirror dash cam. Well, there is a rear camera that it is included in the kit and the rear camera can be installed fairly easily using this double-sided tape. We simply peel the adhesive tape and then stick this to the rear windshield of our car. Now this that, um, camera is meant to be mounted on the interior of the car, but they do have an option for you to get a waterproof one, which could be mounted on the exterior. Now the camera, once it's placed on the inside of the windshield, can be turned and we can aim it up and down just to give us the best possible view of the road. Now, how do we connect the rear camera to the main camera? Well, they included this very long cable. So I think this is gonna work out for most, if not all cars. And here's another cool trick that this camera does. It supports a side camera. I have never seen this on a mirror dash cam. And this side camera is available in two colors. They have them available in black or in chrome. Um, that way you can determine which color would look better on your car. And installing the side camera is say, easy to because you only have double-sided tape that you have to peel. And then it can be stuck to the side of your car and it's gonna give you visibility when you're trying to change lanes. A lot of new cars have a side camera and that again makes it safer to drive. Now you can have a side camera too. And the dash cam does support GPS, so you get a GPS module. And it has a nice long enough core, so it should be able to reach the dash cam without no issues. And this dash cam also includes a memory card. And that memory card size is gonna vary depending on the bundle that you choose when you are looking at purchasing one of these 360 degree mirror dash cams. To power up the dash cam, they have included the cigarette lighter adapter plug with a mini USB right angle connector. Finally, they include the installation tool for the wires. Now, this is just a piece of plastic, but I always tell people this is gonna make your job a lot easier because instead of pulling panels to hide the cables, I can simply push the wire inside of the trim of the car or into the panels using this tool. So this tool, as simple as it is, it is a lightsaber and I'm glad they include it. And here's a Kiyo AKY 
V360S 360 degree mirror dash cam. Now the dash cam will normally turn on automatically, but I like to turn this on manually just so we can see how fast it takes to turn on. And here we go. Now we are presented with quite a bit of views on this massive 12 inch screen. As we can see, this is the rear view and these views are provided by the 360 degree camera that's located here. And I love this about 360 degree cameras. We can pan and we can see the front, we can see the left, we can see the cabin, and we can see the right side of the car. Now my favorite view is changed by doing here and going to this view right here, which is number six. Now this view, it's really awesome in my opinion because I have the view for the rear and I have the side camera. Again, the side camera is something I have not seen before on a mirror dash cam. And there are more views that you can choose from, but I find number six and number three that to be the most helpful. Now let's talk about what we have going on on this side of the screen. We have the miles per hour and we have a compass. I love when dash cams have a compass. Even though this is pulling GPS, latitude and longitude information, I always enjoy a simple compass. Now we have the date and time on this side and we also have the date and time on the other side. Not sure why, maybe because they're two independent cameras, but you have it in two places. And if I touch the screen twice, we can enlarge the view, which will give us the ability to use the entire rear view mirror. And you can also adjust the view by sliding your finger up and down on the screen if you wanted to see the sky. <laughs> but most of the time I find it helpful just to see real behind me towards the sidewalk. But let's go back to the original view. Now this side right here, you can also blow it up, but this is the side camera. So I'm not sure why you would wanna drive with the side camera on, but you can definitely do so either side. And let's talk about resolution. Akiyo is using both Sony sensors for the rear camera and the front camera. Now the rear camera is rated at 1920 by 1080 high definition. The front camera is rated at 1920 by 1920. So that is higher than standard high definition. That is close to quad high definition. And this dash cam does support parking assist, which is enabled by connecting one extra wire to the reversing tail lights of the car. And as we can see, if we put the car on reverse, the lines will come up. And you can see on here that the lines are gonna kind of guide us into its location and you can kind of adjust where they fall by moving the camera up and down. But I suspect this will work better if you install the, the camera on the outside as opposed to the inside of the cabin like I have mounted it. But what about parking monitoring? Well, this dash cam does support parking monitoring, but you will have to hardwire it. And to view the recorded videos, you can simply view them in the dash cam or download them to your PC. In the dash cam, they're nicely sorted out depending on what view you're interested on, so that makes it convenient. And this camera does support G sensor, which means it will automatically detect when you get into a car crash because it has a sensor that feels when your car gets hit. But if you did not get hit, if you saw something that you wanna capture forever, you can press the lock button and notice that now we have locked that recording and nothing is gonna happen. So the dash cam is saving it somewhere else separate than the normal files where nothing happened. And finally, we can go into the actual menu. So I'm gonna stop the recording here and enter the menu. This menu is one of the most simplest, easiest menus that I have seen in a mirror dash cam, which is good if you're a beginner, but let's go over the settings. G sensor sensitivity. This is how sensitive the dash cam is to detecting a car crash. And if this sensitivity is set too high, anytime I hit a bump on the road, the dash cam thinks I'm getting into a car crash and is locking the file when nothing really happened. So I put that to low when it's really only gonna detect when my car actually hits something. You can also select how long it takes before the screen itself turns off. The dash cam continues to record, but the screen has turned off for that stealthy look. I like to keep that as off, so that means that the screen is always gonna stay on. Let's move over to the advanced settings. You can change the language, you can lower the sound volume, and this is one of those few dash cams that does not have an annoying sound. As you can see, it's just a tin tin. So 
eh, I'm gonna leave that on, not a problem. You can also select what to show on the screen. I like to have my speed, the compass, and the clock. And that is it. It's a very simple menu. Not a lot of options where you're gonna get confused on. So I like that, it's very user friendly. So now let's go look at some actual test drive footage. And here's what the 360 degree video looks like. You have the front view, you have the cabin view, and then you have the left and the right side of the car. Just a tremendous amount of real estate. And this is what always strips me out about 360 degree captures. <laughs> the ability to pan the camera around and we can really see even the details of where was the shifter located at what was the passenger doing so this is pretty cool now let me show you what this looks like at night and here's what the 360 degree video looks like at night you got the same setup you got the front view you got the cabin view you got the left side of the car and you got the right side of the car and we can still move and pan the camera around if we wanted to capture a particular angle and i also remember we got the side camera and we got the rear mounted camera to complement this video And if you guys have any questions regarding the Akiyo 360 degree mirror dash cam, please put that in the comments down below. It's a pretty neat dash cam. I have not seen anything like this come to the market. I've seen standalone 360 degree cameras, but never a 360 degree mirror dash cam. The side camera is especially helpful. I didn't realize how helpful it is until I started using this more and more. And I have plenty of other reviews for dash cams on my channel under the playlist dash cams if you guys like to check that out. But stay tuned, I have a lot more cool gadgets and other reviews for you as well as how to videos. So make sure you guys stay tuned by subscribing. Thank you guys for watching and as always, I'll see you on the next one.